What is up everybody? This is Michael Filesage checking in here today and I hope you guys are doing great. So before we begin the video guys, check out my Patreon if you would like to see some free fruiting content and some real fruits because I'm not posting them on YouTube anymore. And also check out Sage's Intergalactic Nightclub. That is the companion channel to Mycophilia. Those two are like yin and yang. So if you want the full Mycophilia experience, check it out. All right, let's get on with the video. So today in this video, I wanna talk about cleaning syringes, or I should say sterilizing syringes, uh, or reusing syringes. And you know, there's all sorts of techniques that are out there. You know, people would uh, basically like separate the needle, take out the plunger, put it in foil and pressure cook it or you know they will put it inside jars and put a little bit of water and pressure cook it or they would put a little bit of water in here and then pressure cook it and you know all of these things work but i i'm all about simplicity effectiveness and reliability as, as it says on my channel those three are like the tenements of mycophilia those three things are the most important things for me and this channel so I want to show you guys a super simple way using just boiling water and it works. This is how I've done it for years now. So let's get into this video. So basically, I'd like to show you guys an example of why I don't like pressure cooking syringes by showing you guys an example of a syringe that has been pressure cooked multiple times. As you can see, this is actually, you see the shape there? It's not a perfect circle. Here, let me show you. So over here, as you can see, this is a new syringe. And this is an old syringe that's been pressure cooked multiple times. And do you see the difference, right? The old one is oval. The pressure cooked one is oval shaped. Okay, so you say, all right, but it's just like looks, right? No, it's not because, so let's just say that without the needle, we just take the plunger and we just, you know, pull up some water, right? Full of water, no problem. That's no problem. But then as soon as we put a needle here, it creates an imperfect seal or an improper seal, and you pull up the water here, and what do you have? You have a lot of air there, right? That's no good. That is a sign that you should change your syringe because you're bringing in more potentially contaminated air inside, and you don't want to be doing this thing in, inside your sab. And by this thing, what I mean is pulling in the plunger, bringing the water. Okay, so there's an air pocket. So now you're going to take out the air out of the plunger again, and then you're going to stick the needle back into whatever you're sucking up. And then you keep doing that, you know, and it's just a lot of time. And it's just an increased contamination vector to be doing that constantly. And also you're probably doing this with one hand because you're holding the jar or the plate with your other hand. So it's just a lot of, you know, tedious um, kind of risky work that I want to avoid. With a new syringe, right, put the needle in there and just go like this. And let's see the comparison. Now look at that. Huge difference, right guys? Huge difference. Just a little bit of air and that's fine. That'll do perfectly. It's just the least hassle and the least chance of problems occurring. So that's when you should change your syringe. And also you won't have this problem uh, at least nearly as much if you just use the method that I'm gonna show you today. So, uh, but before we get to sterilization, you know, people like to use syringes in mycology for liquid culture, liquid inoculant, agar, slurry, or spore syringes, right, for spores. Spore water, right, uh, which is the most common use. So with all these methods, Basically, it splits into two, spores or mycelium. That's the essence of it, right? Now, when we're talking mycelium, then you want to make sure that you clean your syringe much better than if you're just using spores, especially if you're using liquid culture, because now you're bringing in sugar as well. So you want to be more careful with that. You want to rinse it out better. So how would you rinse it out? Well, let's say that uh, you've got your syringe here. Let's say you use it for liquid culture, right? What you want to do is you just want to do multiple runs like this, just pulling in water, pulling out water right? Multiple times. Do that a couple of times. Okay. And then after you're done, just pull out the plunger, see if there's any mycelium left on here, see if there's any dirt or whatever on here. You don't want it. Hopefully you don't have any. And inside, just check, you know, usually a couple of that will take care of it. But if it's not, you could rinse it out with water again. Uh, I try to avoid putting anything inside here, but you'll probably be fine. But usually a couple, as I said, a couple of runs of this will take care of it. So yeah, that's basically it. You know, just common sense stuff. And also the needles, you could reuse the needles quite a bit as well, but um, I don't because I got a big bag of needles, but I do reuse it maybe three times. 
So basically, that's how I prepare syringes that have been used for liquid cultures or liquid inoculant, etc. Anything with live mycelium. So for spore syringes, though, I don't do any of that. I go straight to the sterilization technique, which I'll show you now. All right, guys, so we are in the kitchen. And as you can see, we have a pot of boiling water. This is how we want to do it. Just put some water in a pot and boil it. Simple stuff, right? So uh, at this point, you can let it boil for 10 minutes to ensure that there's no contaminants. If you have like dirty water or if, you're, if your tap water is not very clean and you know it, then you might want to do it for 10 minutes. Usually for sports syringes, at least, I just go directly already. But we're just going to leave this for 10 minutes just to show you guys the safe way. And I will be back after 10 minutes have elapsed. Hey guys, so I lost the video footage that I have after that video. So I'm just going to go over exactly what's going to happen here. What I'm going to do is after 10 minutes have passed, I'm going to take the syringe that I want to clean and I'm going to pull up some of this boiling water into the syringe. And then I'm going to leave it there for one minute with the hot water. After a minute has passed, I'm going to spit it out into the sink or a cup. And then I'm going to repeat this process two to three times just to make sure. And also, if you want to clean the outside of the syringe as well, which I, I recommend that you do occasionally, then you just need to pop the syringe into the boiling water itself before you start pulling the hot water and clean the inside. So before you do the inside, basically stick your syringe, put, put the whole thing into the boiling water and let it boil for a couple of minutes to just sterilize the outside. And the reason that you don't have to pressure cook it, there's no pressure cooker involved, is because plastic doesn't harbor any bacterial endospores. And most mold spores are killed you know, like far before boiling temperature. So this is why it works. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this syringe and put it into the boiling water and I'm gonna suck it up like this. There we go. And you wanna be careful. Uh, it's gonna take a couple of uh, times to do this to get everything inside, but you wanna do this with two hands for sure. As you can see, it's boiling in there. It's pretty cool, huh? All right, so here we are, we got some water, but it's still not enough, so I'm just gonna shoot some. And suck it up again. So we're just gonna let it sit here, and you can leave it here for 30 seconds to a minute. All right, and then what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spit it out into the sink. All right guys, so a minute has passed. So you wanna spit out your water into a cup or the sink or whatever, just put out the water there. You don't wanna put it back inside there because it's very clean in there. All right, and now you wanna do this one to two more times. All right, so we'll leave this for another minute and I'll, back, I'll be back to you. So after a minute has passed, just spit out the water once again. All right guys, so we have done it twice so far. And now for the last time, I'm just gonna put the water in here, right? Put it, fill it up, and then I'm just gonna leave it and let it cool down. And I'm gonna have sterile water to make, for example, spore syringes, or in my case, I'm gonna use agar slurry. If you were using this for liquid culture or liquid inoculant, then obviously you wouldn't put water in here. So uh, you could, it's already sterile, just leave the water out, seal it, if, if you are doing it for liquid culture or liquid inoculant, when you spit the water out on the second time, leave the cap on, right? When you're still, when you still got the water and then spit out your water with the cap on. That way it's gonna clean the inside of the cap as well. And then leave it like this and it's sealed, right? So then when you take this into the sab or your flow hood to, and to, to put, take your liquid culture or your liquid inoculant, then you can, you can be sure that it's clean. But I would flame sterilize it anyways just out of habit, even if it's new, I, I just flame sterilize it. It's just, you know, like a tick, I guess you could say. So basically, yeah, that's the difference with sports syringes and doing it for liquid culture and liquid inoculant. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Much love, guys. Michael File Sage checking out. Bye-bye.